Now I have to say, your daughter takes after your wife. So intelligent, uh, so much good chat. She looks like an absolute ball of energy. Yeah, and the looks as well, thank God. <laughs> yeah, of course. She didn't get mine, so uh, no, you know, I mean, she's fantastic. I mean, a great kid, not just saying it because she's ours, but obviously all we've tried to install in her is just always use your please and thank yous uh, and whatever, whatever else she does in life. As long as she's happy, we'll be happy. Sean said when his kids came along that it did give him an added motivation, if for no other reason that when he gets really old and knackered, as he said, he wants them to be able to look up bits of him on YouTube and go, wow, my, my dad was actually quite cool. Do you get a similar sense with Sophia or, or has your motivation not really changed after becoming a, a father? Not really. I mean, it, it definitely has changed. If anything, I'm, I'm even more motivated because you want to do it for them. Uh, and, and very similar to, to like what Sean says, they can look back in years to come and see what you've achieved and, and see their matches you've won on YouTube and so on. And, uh, and, and be proud of what you've done. So all, all you want them to do as a child is, is make you proud. And, and I'm trying to do the same as a father. Yeah, and, it, and it's nice because although, you know, she might come in here and she'll gain a better understanding of what this actually means when she gets older, but you're just dad. Yeah, I am. And, and no matter what I achieve in snooker, if, if I'd win everything in the game or if I never won anything in the game, I, would, I wouldn't change as a person. I'd still be exactly the same. Still want to do the best I can for Sophia and uh, try and teach her the right from wrongs and, and support her as much as I can. The first final is always going to be the most special especially because it was in honour of your dad and, and you beat Ronnie on this very table. But having Sophia run out and have a little understanding of what she was witnessing, that must have made it very close to 2014. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, obviously, Sophia w w was still there in 2014. She was in Vicky's tummy like, but, <laughs> uh, born five months later. But yeah, I mean, now it's getting to the stage, especially the World Championship just gone. She's understanding more, obviously, what I do for a living and she understands and gets it more. So it was nice to actually win it this time and, and her to come out like she has done in the previous years, but before she didn't really know what was going on. She, as far as she can say, just, just stood there having a picture with some random people who she don't know, but <laughs> now she understands it more, which is fantastic. On a general reflection of this world, I mean, it was a brutal run, wasn't it? Kurt Mathlin, who'd played brilliantly to get to the quarters the previous year. Mark Allen, who, albeit had had some wobbly performances later on in the season, but won the champion of champions playing out of his skin. And then and then, you, and then you had Willow before, um, you know, before heading to the semis in the final. It, it was a tough route. Yeah, it was. Uh, I remember looking at the draw uh, only a few weeks before and I was in a different section to the section I ended up being in. Uh, and the only way it could change was if Robertson won the tournament at Celtic Manor, which he managed to do. So then me and Neil swapped over. So I was in like, the section with Higgins, Mark Allen and, and Williams. And even before the tournament started, Every player is in the tournament, it's a tough draw, but for me that was the standout quarter and it was more or less like a bloodbath. And you mentioned to me, you know, when we were having a bit of food, that when you played the semi against Ronnie behind closed doors, you really missed the buzz. So how much did you relish having that back for the semis this time? Playing Ronnie in that semi-final, it's always a great occasion when you're playing Ronnie. Uh, and to play him out there with, with, with no fans was quite surreal, really. So it was, it was tough, but uh, at the same time, it still hurt as much as every other loss when you, when, when you ended up coming out on the losing side. A year on, going back there, getting to the one table set up, having a full capacity was, was absolutely amazing because the Sheffield, it's like, it's a, it's a tournament we want to win every single year we go there. It's the best venue we play in. And to actually go there knowing that there's going to be no crowd was sort of soul-destroying, really. So going back there a year on, and it being the, the pilot event for, for crowds to be back was, was an amazing feeling. Looking at the final, I mean, it was such a mouth-watering occasion because Sean, after an early scare against Mark Davis, really started to produce some amazing snooker. Some of his long pots against Yan Bing Tao in the second round were mm. ridiculous. I think I even said at the end, after, after the match had finished, it's probably as good as I've seen him play for, for a few years and basically back to where he was three or four years ago when he was winning tournaments. He won a few tournaments out in China, playing some great stuff. So it was nice to see, you know, because we've grown up together through the, through the junior ranks, known each other for, for many, many years. And it's tough when you watch a player of his, of his quality struggle, like he had done over the last couple of years. So it's nice to see him back playing well. That, that roar at the end will forever be replayed. Here it goes. And that's the way. And what is Vicky absolutely delighted. I can't remember another context in which you've 
celebrated in, in, in that kind of uninhibited way. It was quite, it was great to watch. It was just a bit unexpected, I think. Yeah, and it, it's not something planned either. It's just more instinctive than anything else. And I think the biggest thing was, because I've won it before, and you get to the one table set up, the Crucible is such an iconic venue and, and such a tough tournament to win. So you, you never know when it's going to be your last time there, whether it's the final or one table set up or whatever. So when you're in the final, you just try your hardest because you want to win. Because as you say, who knows if you, you no divine right to win the tournament ever again. So it was more elation than anything else. But as I say, I wasn't sat in my chair thinking, well, if I clear this last red and colours up, I'm going to go absolutely mental and scream the house down. It was just instinct to potted the black and, and, and it just came out. And what will your mindset be about this season? Do you think, will you pick and choose a little bit more? Or, you know, when travelling eventually starts again, will you be of the mindset that you're going to enter everything? I've sort of missed not going to China the last 18 months. If you offered me the choice to go to China now for a tournament, have a week at time and then go back, I think everybody would take it from what we've gone through over the last 18 months. So I probably will play in, in, in quite a lot. And I feel as though that's my role as well as defending champion and world champion. For your year, while you're world champion, you're out there to sort of promote the sport. So by pulling out of a lot of events, it's probably not a good thing. So I'll try and play in as many as I can. Is it important to you to get back to world number one? Because... You know, the fact that you've won half a million pounds prize money, you're now pretty close behind Judd Trump. It's, it's, it's within touching distance, depending on what happens over the, the next few months. Yeah, it wasn't up until about eight months ago because I was about two million pounds behind him. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody else was as well. But uh, now, as you say, uh, winning the World Championships and, and getting that close, then yeah, it is at the back of my mind. But Judd, you know, he's had a, such a great three or four seasons the last few years, winning a lot, a lot of events and playing some fantastic snooker. I'm sure he'll have a lot to say about that as well. Well, we're looking forward to seeing what this forthcoming season holds. Great to chat to you, Mark, and thanks for, uh, for showing us around your, um, your epic sanctuary. It's been, uh, been a great day. No problem, Rob. Thanks for coming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's actually still quite good. <laughs>